Hello and welcome back, and we're going to begin uh, reassembling the Steph Thomas movement. And the first thing to do is set the bottom plate aside and place the top plate here, and to reattach the count wheel to the um, movement front plate. And so I'm doing this here, as you can obviously see. There's a washer here that's forked that goes on there and it has a tab that fits in that hole and holds the count wheel in position. And you just use the marks from where it was previously mounted and it should go right into place. So the first part I'm going to install in the back plate is going to be the hammer assembly. It mounts just like that with the spring on the tail there. Next can go the um, great wheel kind of set it up roughly where it needs to go Install the time center arbor and the time great wheel. The minute wheel and pinion arbor. And then the hour tube. Okay. the time second wheel and these wheels have to be fitted round like that to get the um, um, mating wheels in between the two uh, flanges of the lantern pinions next we can add the strike second wheel And then the control lever for the strike. You try to position things to where the locking lever is already in the slot. Then the lifting and warning assembly goes in. Got to get it in, in the correct positions. that then the fly try to get the fly oriented or uh, correctly so that you'll get about a half a turn of run uh, when it goes to warn careful not to bump everything out of alignment the escape wheel will go in with the front plate and so I attach the escape wheel in there like that and just hold it in place while lowering the front plate down and then basically what I'm going to do is start with the taller arbors first as I lower the front plate down and guide things into position here Okay. Now it's a simple matter of starting from the bottom and working our way towards the top of the movement to reassemble things, applying a bit of downward pressure on the plates as we go to get things to go in. And sometimes you can't strictly follow from bottom to top. Sometimes some, some pivots are longer than others and have to be done in the right order.
and I'm going to, as I get a corner down, I'm going to slip a taper pin in the holes to help hold things together uh, so things don't spring apart, pop apart on me and then I lose what I've worked to achieve. So, and I might move the pins around after everything is together to get the pins that fit best in the right places. But I've got that together there. I don't want to lose those. It looks like the time side is going to go together real nice and easy here. This is fairly easy to do compared to a lot of clocks because of how few wheels there are in it, how few parts there are in it. And it looks like everything is in except the two strike control levers, the fly, and it looks like the second wheel is pretty close to being in. The escape wheel lower pivot isn't in. I see it's caught on the shroud there. It's going to take a little bit of, there we go. Okay, we're in the top, everything's lined up real good there, so just need to get these two uh, strike levers positioned in there where they need to go, and that will help out a lot. Okay, everything is in position and I can install a pin in all the pillar holes now. And these pins are slightly flattened out and they install best in one sort of orientation better than the other. So for now I'm just going to install two pins uh, diagonally opposite corners here. Try to get it oriented the way I want to where it goes in at least halfway through. It's as good as that one's going to get. Okay. So, the time has come to check to see how bad we are with the timing of the striking levers with the reassembly. So what I'm going to do is rotate these gears here in the operating direction till we get to a locking point. And uh, and see how things look. Okay, so right there, we are locked. And look at that. The first try. It's right where I want it to be. Okay, and I see though that the fly is not correct. 
So, very carefully here, without rotating anything else, and I'm going to turn this around so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to spread the plate here just enough that I can ease this um, pivot on the fly out. And, uh, turn this to where this pin is facing that way, okay? And you saw I put the locking lever back down in the deep slot to where it's in the locked position. And that sets what's called the warning run. And I'll explain these things here in a little bit better detail. But for now, without any of these other wheels turning, I want to lift this up enough that I can slip this out, rotate it, make sure that my second wheel stays where I want it to be and then remesh it like that and now I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure here to help uh, use the winding crank will make it a little easier okay apply a little bit of uh, pressure to the lever there Okay, so there's the locked position. Okay, and you see where the uh, warning pin is falling is still not where it needs to be. So we're going to do that same operation again. Hold that still, lift this out, and turn it where we want it to be. Hopefully that got it this time. I'm going to hold the movement upright slightly. You probably can't see what I'm doing here. And we're still we're still just off a little bit, you see. So I'm gonna make one more dab at it. So I gotta hold that um, wheel steady there, so it doesn't move. Because if it moves, then you then you're not really making an adjustment. Because you don't know what it, where it's going. And that looks that looks the way I want it to look. Okay. this movement face down like this so you can see what's going on so the direction of the power turning these gears is this way so you can see there's the warning pin it's 180 degrees out from where it would contact the warning lever and then the hammer tail is resting clear of the pin and so if I um, advance the time train and raise the lifting piece up to the warning position now it's warned we still have clearance there even with a half a turn on the fly for warning and if I rotate this on around okay 
so everything's functioning just like it's supposed to so at this point we can install the rest of the pins and get the movement ready to go back in the case uh, there's one more part that has to be added though and that's go ahead and add the verge like that okay now I'm going to apply a little bit of power to the time train here and the escapement should flutter I'm just using very light pressure and we'll watch the escape we'll make a full revolution here Everything looks to be pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll oil the movement and reassemble it in the case. And we'll probably do that um, tomorrow. So stay tuned. More videos on this project to come.